Lois has just been speaking at Careers in the Outdoors about her life as a water sports instructor. Lois currently works for Nielsen Active Holidays, and I'm just going to have a few words with her about what she's done in the past and the opportunities available with her company. Uh, Lois, you just talked uh, very inter we, we had a very interesting talk about your life as a water sports instructor and the seasonal work that you've done. Um, can you tell me, did you start doing water sports? Is that the way you got into it in the first place? Yeah, I started doing uh, two UK-based uh, seasons teaching sailing, my first ones. Okay, and that was like on a lake? Uh, yeah, it was in the reservoir um, up in Ahoti, and then after that I fancied going overseas because it was a bit warmer. <laughs> okay, okay. And what sort of qualifications did you have when you first got into water sports? Um, I was just the basic RYA dinghy instructor that just had the very basic and my power boating and that was it really. Okay, okay. And you taught dinghy sailing overseas? Uh, yeah, I then went to work for Sunsail for two seasons in Turkey and I've also worked in Greece teaching sailing and, and windsurfing. I qualified as a windsurf instructor a bit later on. Okay. So how many water sports seasons have you done overseas? Um, too many, no. Um, too many but maybe not enough. Uh, I did two two for t in Turkey, two in Greece. So yeah, just the four uh, ones overseas and then I've done lots of UK based ones as well. Okay, okay. So, so a lot of water sports seasons, a lot of experience there. Okay, and what have you done? When you've done water sports seasons, have you also worked um, in the winter? Yeah, I did the crossover. So I got to go and work in the chalet around my own chalet, which was just beautiful in the, the snow. And then I was a resort assistant resort manager for Maribel and I went over and covered the Valteren as well. Crystal. Okay. We have a lot of people that uh, talk to us about their career in the outdoors or in adventure or in adventure travel and a lot of them start off as water sports instructors and, w and obviously enjoy water sports and they want to do water sports again the next season but sometimes the winter gets in the way and they think okay well I can't really get a job in the UK in the winter as a water sports instructor, uh, I can do some other job in the UK and okay, there's a few overseas water sports jobs, but you really need to be quite experienced to get those in the, the winter season jobs, is that right? Um, yeah, we've just opened our first center in Kenya, um, and that's a year round contract, so we've just started doing that one. But yeah, the overseas uh, winter water sports is harder to get. The better thing is going to ski, so becoming the chalet host, a ski rep, something like that. You just need to be careful about where you're hoping to work. Um, because there can be a crossover of the date. So if you go and work in a chalet in um, France, for example, they have quite a late ski season. So it's best to head to somewhere like Andorra, which will be finished by April, because April time, you want to start thinking about heading out for your summer. If you work within the same company, we worry all about that for you. So we do your release dates so that you're able to do both jobs um, and usually give you either a week to two weeks at home just so you can spend your family and then go back out again. Now that's interesting. I mean, as you say, with your company, with Nielsen Active Holidays, there is the opportunity for a water sports instructor to try and do a winter season in ski. And as you say, if they get the dates right, they can still do the water sports season the following year. And that's actually quite a, it's a, it actually works well together. What about someone who has, let's say they've done a, a, water, a water sports summer season in the UK or overseas, and then they want to go and get a, a ski job because they think that works well with water sports. How would they uh, go about deciding what kind of winter job to get? Because usually they're really good at teaching windsurfing or sailing or canoeing, but they haven't got a clue about the, uh, about the snow. And they think, oh, what do I have to do, become a ski instructor? I can't even ski. So where do they start? What would your advice be? Uh, definitely play to your strengths. If you can cook, um, then go on a cookery course. That kind of ups your chances of getting a job. That's quite a good one. If you've got worked in a shop, that shows you've got sales experience. So go down the repping kind of side of things. To be a rep, you only have to have very basic skiing because the main part of the job is to be selling and do customer complaints and things like that. Um, and then you can still get bar work, waitressing work. So if they've done that before, then I'd, do, I'd head for that one as well. Again, all about playing with your strengths, doing what you've done before, definitely. What about uh, some some people talk about ski tech roles? Are they are they easy to pick up? Do you, what, what experience do you need for that? Um, you need to be able to speak the language of where you're going on a very high level, ho hopefully fluently. And there's very few positions about for the ski tech roles. And you need to have, a, a, I mean, a brilliant knowledge of all the different products out there. So yeah, right. it's a very 
very niche role, that one. Okay, so you'd, you'd much more push people towards a, a rep role or bar work. What about drivers, that's the sort of driving jobs? Yeah, they definitely exist as well. Again, there are very few that, that have happened. But yeah, I mean, um, I think the age is slightly higher as well. They've got to be a bit older. If they've got their advanced driving, that's always good. And also experience of driving in very snowy conditions. But again, it's a very customer-focused role. So they need to have had customer service experience as well, which is, you know, shop, bar work, things like that. They can lead us through that. I mean, quite often we speak to water sports instructors and they say, yeah, well, I thought I'd go on one of those ski instructor courses in, Sc in Canada and I'll come back qualified and then I'll get a job as a ski instructor in France. Does, does that work? It does, but um, in France particularly, they, um, it's ESF are the main ones and they only employ French people and they're the, the company that most people will use. So um, you, it is possible, but again, you know, very niche role and you need to be you know, fluent in, in French speaking. So yeah, definitely. And uh, there's obviously a bit of a male-female thing that sometimes happens here with perceptions on jobs. And uh, do many guys actually work as chalet hosts and chalet cooks? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> so many of them. I think it's quite an even split, actually. I don't think there is like a like girls do the cooking and the boys do the reps, really. No, because the boys, are, well, hopefully they can cook. <laughs> well, it's great to get rid of that myth. But let's face yeah. it, you know. There's a lot of uh, programs on TV about being a chef now, so why, why shouldn't the guys cook just as much as the girls? Yeah, that's cool. Okay, that's good. So basically, uh, you'd encourage any water sports instructor thinking of doing a ski season, look at being a chalet host, look at going on a cookery course, or look at trying to get a job as a rep, because they've got good communication skills that they picked up by, through their water sports, and they can transfer those into the winter sports environment, and then come back and do another summer season. That's great. Well, thanks, Lois. That's been really helpful.